नमस्कार आई हैव विद मी पद्मश्री रेसिपियन डॉक्टर सुधीर पारेख ऑन आर वीकली शो दैट इज दिस वीक विद डॉक्टर सुधीर पारेख ऑन आई टी वी गोल्ड नमस्कार डॉक्टर पारेख हाउ आर यू टूडे नमस्कार वेरी वेल एंड नमस्कार एवरी वन सो यू नो डॉक्टर पारेख लेट मी स्टार्ट विद दिस अ वेरी हाई पावर मीटिंग ऑफ फॉरन मिनिस्टर्स ऑफ जी ट्वेंटी जस्ट कंक्लूडेड इन इंडिया एंड आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट यू टू कामेंट ऑन टू ऑब्जर्वेशन फर्स्ट इज दैट यू नो वी हैड यू एस सेक्रेटरी ऑफ स्टेट एंथनी ब्लिंकन एंड रशियन फॉरन मिनिस्टर दैट इज सरगे लाव राव मीट आफ्टर यूक्रेन वॉर and the second observation that there was no agreement and objection particularly from china and russia uh, on the statements pertaining to ukraine war so can we have just your comments and observations well that shows that uh, how much uh, polarization we have in this world and it's very unfortunate that uh, they could not agree on uh, and this is a war i mean what what going on since one year is nothing but a kind of uh, illegitimate or illegal war because uh, no i mean you cannot uh, uh, live in the world uh, or or so called civilized world where once you have agreed on the boundaries by united nation or uh, all the parties in war you cannot uh, uh, breach anyone's uh, uh, border without any reason or without any uh, uh, notice or without any real good um, reason to do that it, it it it's called encroachment and you cannot do encroachment is illegal and and i think it, and that's why there is a war many people uh, sifted millions of people they uh, left uh, ukraine and went to the poland a lot of uh, even russian left russia and came to the european countries as well as usa and uh there is mil, mil, uh, thousands of people died and become uh, homeless so this is nothing but war so uh, uh, it's very unfortunate that russia and china did not agree on that uh, language of war and that, that is very 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 disappointing thing and i think we should uh, everybody should have behaved in a more civilized way and more diplomatic way you know uh, dr parik recently actually uh, supreme indian supreme court uh, gave a couple of landmark uh, judgments uh, which included creating a task force to look into gautam adani's fraud allegations uh, by hindenburg uh, so i have again two questions one is what can be expected from this task force and uh, second uh, should judiciary interfere in open financial markets like this uh judiciary Uh, usually they don't involved in this kind of open uh, market like this but here i think a lot of um, uh, the lot of uh, long lasting uh, kind of implication of the accusation so when someone is accusing uh, or some uh, reliable uh, party is accusing it uh, and uh, when uh, people's money is involved because uh, uh, lic and sbi and lot of other nationalized bank money was involved in the this business so we are not saying that they have done anything wrong we are only saying that uh, it should be investigated should be look into that and should be corrected uh, later on means whole system to be should be corrected and, and every country has the same problem i mean uh, for example there is a bankruptcy of the bitcoin nft uh, so and uh, almost 8 billion dollar lost right so uh, it means people lost the money right right and those people lost money has to have at least some kind of closure mm -hmm. so we are not saying that here anybody lost money but we have to uh, it is uh, it is uh, it is important and it is i think always welcome even uh, mr adani also welcome the um, investigation right. because by having investigation and proving that he is innocent and he is uh, he has not done anything wrong on the contrary it will increase the uh, price of his shares right because then people have more trust in him and he can borrow more much more money uh, and leverage himself to do the bigger, more uh, bigger businesses mm -hmm. so i think uh, what supreme court is did it is the right thing mm -hmm. and always uh, when uh, everything is in um, kind of confusion uh, usually supreme court 
has right to have so so close uh, not uh, notice and uh, take over the subject right doesn't matter whether is this investigation or any other investigation Wonderful. You know, let's continue with uh, Indian politics. You know, in Indian politics, Rahul Gandhi is, I would say, full guns blazing, you know, attacking Prime Minister Modi and BJP from London. So uh, this has generated a new political uh, war between Congress and BJP. So do you think he's crossing the line when he says that judiciary, media and politicians are under attack in India? Uh, probably he's crossing the line because usually it's an unwritten uh, rule that when you are outside your country, you do not uh, criticize your own country. Right. And uh, uh, so th in that case, uh, yes, he is kind of a little out, uh, out of uh, boundary. But his argument is different. He said that we are not allowed to speak in the parliament. We are not allowed to do this, that. Mm -hmm. So we have no other choice but to say something. Hmm. So we don't know uh, who is right. right. So I think it's a more of political uh, rhetoric uh, than anything else. And, uh, but I think uh, the rule of the thumb is that when you go out of country, hmm. you should always uh, you should, uh, pr uh, promote your country and never uh, degrade your country. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, let's uh, shift from politics to technology. Uh, Elon Musk, he has been, you know, one of the best innovators in this era, and he's created a leading brand in uh, electric yes. vehicles, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Tesla. Uh, and of late, you know, he continues to drop prices to beat competition and buy market share. So following his 20% price cuts in January, he further dropped prices in the range of 4 to 9%. So do you feel uh, this is a sustainable uh, strategy or he is he monetizing his technology innovation? I think um, it's a smart uh, business strategy, you know, to drop the price when other uh, uh, EV pro uh, producer or manufacturer in the market, mm -hmm. uh, who are, those are the small people, they are a very limited uh, market they have. Mm -hmm. So the, always a person who has a larger market, they always try to make sure that the competition doesn't last too long. Right. And I think that's a very smart thing to do because uh, when, when he cuts 5% 5, 5 but I'm sure on that car he has a profit of 100%. Absolutely. So 5% is nothing. It's a smart business strategy and I think uh, I, I think I, I uh, applaud him for that, that uh, he knows what he's doing for himself, I mean his company. Absolutely. So, you know, now uh, getting, uh, I would say, into the intersection of medicine and politics. What do you think about Nikki Haley's, you know, call for competency tests for politicians over the age of 75? I, I don't think um, uh, Nikki Haley, uh, when always, you know, when they run for president, uh, any, any position or higher position, right. they always have a medical certification, you know that. Mm -hmm because they have to have medical certification uh, to say that they are fit to run. Exactly. So that should include uh, everything, including mental capacity too. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot, you cannot uh, because you don't agree with somebody or someone's uh, thinking, right. you can't tell them crazy. Exactly. You have to argue and, 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 uh, and uh, discuss right. why he's, uh, what he's saying is not right. Mm -hmm. or, he or she, whatever, whoever is saying it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is, no, I think, um, I think Nikki Haley's statement is probably, again, is a political rhetoric and has not much meaning. And it will be forgotten in no time. <laughs> that is true. So, you know, March 8th is uh, celebrated as International Women's Day, and uh, we have seen women advancements and women empowerment everywhere. And, you know, Indian cricket just uh, kicked off a women's uh, cricket league in progress in India. And in <coughs> another story, first women officer was posted at uh, Saichin Glacier. And on the other end, there are a lot of, I would say, underprivileged, particularly rural women who need to be empowered and made digitally fluent to succeed in today's world. Since you are involved in a lot of charity work, what activities would you recommend in this space and how can larger ITV Gold Viewer community contribute and how? Well, I mean, I would, I would like to say that what I am doing it as a chairman of the Life Global, 
we are empowering uh, almost 10 to 15,000 women every year in, wow. in, in rural area of the Gujarat and Rajasthan, mm -hmm. intra-tribal areas. What we are doing is we are teaching them all the cottage industries and handicrafting uh, and uh, other uh, sewing and all, all sort of beauty salon and all those things. Mm. And th those women become uh, self-sufficient and right. uh, they can uh, protect, their, I mean, know how to uh, how to earn the money for uh, their family. Mm -hmm. So I strongly believe, and not only believe, but we are, I'm doing it uh, every year, 10 to 15,000 women. So far we empower in last uh, 10 years almost uh, 50,000 women. Wow. And uh, they all are got uh, some kind of um, uh, source of the income. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I'm for it. And uh, one, all the philanthropic uh, NGOs should, uh, part of their uh, uh, initiative should be uh, women's empowerment, particularly mm -hmm. the poor women. Mm -hmm. There's another way uh, also we are involved in that we, we are in, involved in microfinancing to women. Uh -huh. It means we are lending money to the women who needs money to buy the sewing machine or, or start, uh, start uh, a you know, beauty, beauty salon or mm -hmm. something. And uh, we found that uh, those women uh, gives that money back in on time, in time with the interest. Wow. And uh, so that money is more safer than giving money to uh, some businessman uh, with a uh, uh, small interest. So I think uh, uh, women empowerment is must because I think without empowering, once you empower women, then you empower the family. You empower family means you empower the uh, uh, children of the family and you help them to educa get educated and also uh, our NGO Life Global is also involved in uh, we, we built as you know 108 school in last 15 years wow. uh, in Gujarat mm -hmm. and those are all our primary and girls school mm -hmm. so that way girls can come to the uh, in rural area girls can come to uh, school mm -hmm. because before there were no school no structured school, mm -hmm. so uh, girls were reluctant to come because of the um, sanitation and the toiletry, toilet problem and mm -hmm. all those things. Mm -hmm. So now that problem is also, also be resolved. So I think women empowerment is must in all the level, not only in the rural area or poor woman, but also in the middle class woman, uh, up, uh, upward moving professional woman too, uh, we should empower everyone. Wonderful. And lastly, my question to you is, what is the message from you for our ITV Gold viewers for this week? Well, uh, <clears throat> dear friends, um, as you know, this week is the International Women's uh, uh, Achievement Week. We must uh, uh, recognize all the women in different sectors, dif different uh, fact, uh, specialties including the poor of the poorest woman in the rural area and give them some kind of, uh, teach them some cottage industries so they can be self-sufficient and they can uh, uh, help their family and thereby they educate their kids and then whole family gets uh, uh, benefit. So please uh, try to uh, open up your wallet and uh, wherever you get a chance, uh, donate for women empowerment and you will you will be it is worth re, uh, uh, donation uh, uh, in in your life so after saying that i would like to say god bless america god bless india god bless indian american and we'll see you next time till then goodbye thank you so much